Hello everyone, my name is Ethan Crow, and I have been an expert on dwarfism for the last 45 years, so now it's your turn. I know what some of you are saying, Ethan, I know all about dwarfism, I've watched all eight seasons of Game of Thrones, Tyrion Lannister has taught me everything I need to know, what are you going to get up here and tell me that I don't already know? All right, and then the other half of you are going to say, Ethan, you've been in this community for nine years, and my gosh, I heard you talk about this enough to me, all your stories and your things about what you know about dwarfism. Okay, I get it. So, I came up with the top 17 things that you might not know about dwarfism, because believe it or not, I haven't shared everything. <laughs> Number 16, or number 17. The ancient Egyptians have a Greek uh, god named Bess, who looks just like I do. <laughs> if I were dressed up for Mardi Gras. <laughs> there he is. Dwarven has been around a very long time. Number 16, I found out the most important thing to us as human beings is actually a dwarf. That's right, the sun on the Hertzsprung Russell diagram that categorizes stars based on luminosity and mass, categorizes our sun, things shining out there right now, as a yellow dwarf star. Stay celestial. When I found out that Pluto got demoted, wah, 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 I got a very easy Halloween costume. I put a black shirt on, put a picture of Pluto on my chest, and I went door to door with my son. Number 14, I would host a game show about dwarf species because there is dwarfism on seven out of six continents. Wait, no, six out of seven continents. <laughs> Look at that. Number 13, I have disability number 92. I found out that when I was getting a job at the Statue of Liberty. It said, do you have a disability? I flipped it over, I went down the list, it said profound distortion of whims. I said, what the hell is that? And then they said, e.g. dwarfism. Oh, I got that. Number 92. All right, number 12. Midge is a word for a fly. That fly, in fact. And it can be a very nasty insult for a person. So if you're going to say something about midges, make sure you're talking about flies. All right? Otherwise, we'll stick you to the paper. Number 11. My entire family, and I'm talking about all of my ancestry, every bit of the back of ancient Egyptians is of average height. That's my mom, that's my dad, my aunt and my uncle, and that's my younger brother. All right, number 10. My type of dwarfism occurs in one out of 25,000 births. Holy crud, am I rare. I tell you what. So, there it is, achondroplasia. That's me. Here are the genetic chances for our children. Everyone's like, whoa, can you have tall children? Can you have short children? What are your chances? Well, 25% chance little d, 50% chance big d, little d, and then 25% chance big d, big d. So that is called a Punnett square. Learn it. All right, number eight. Our kids know how to talk about this too, believe it or not, because giving your children a tool set to deal with this difference is a very nice thing to do. And going to East Lima Harris in Cancun is also very nice. <laughs> number seven, I know the challenges of diversity and inclusion. You know why? Because I'm the only one like me in this room. And that's always the case, 99% of the time. Number six, I don't like watching people walk on eggshells. I don't. I, you're not going to insult me unless you're trying to insult me. And then I'm sure you're going to do a fine job. But don't worry about it while we're talking. Number five, I am willing to have difficult conversations. Yes. There are lots of things you're like, oh, we better not talk to him about that. Ugh. No, I've talked about it. I, I think about this. I live this every day. Number four, most days I don't even think about being a dwarf. Yeah, I can be reminded. Sure, yeah, you're never going to be CEO of that company. Bullshit. You don't know if I'm not going to be or not. <laughs> Number three, it took me a long time to stop playing stereotypes. There's our friend Tyrion Lannister over there in the corner who storms out of this film saying, why does my character have to be a dwarf? The director says he doesn't have to be. And he says, so why is it he leaves? Number two, loving to be on stage comes with challenges. Because half of the world expects me to be on stage and be really good at this. And half of the people that are my size aren't. But I'm one of the people that is. And number one, 
the thing you might not know about me is I love doing what I do because being able to educate people about dwarfism is a gift that I get to give every single day. Thank you.